Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. Our topic is creative leadership. So what do we mean by creative leadership? I'll share more about that in just a few moments. Right now, I want to take a moment to welcome you. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Gloria Burgess. This is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'd like to extend a special welcome to those of you who are joining Talk Network Radio for the very first time. You're in for a real treat. I'm excited to have you listening in today, and I'm deeply honored that you've allowed me to be part of your day so you can be inspired by ideas and resources to make your life count. Now, like I said, Today's program is all about creative leadership. Now, some of you may not actually think of yourself as a leader. Maybe you're a a psychotherapist, a clinician, a nurse, or maybe you're an entrepreneur like me. Or, like my niece, maybe you're a student in college and you have no idea right now of what you want to be or do after you graduate. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what you do in your professional life. And it doesn't matter what life stage you're in. You are a leader. How can I say that with such assurance? Here's how. If you are alive and participating in this great adventure we call life, then you are a leader. Now, maybe you're the only person you're leading at the moment, but somebody has to be in charge, right? And that's you. You are in charge of yourself. So you can make a difference in your own life, and you can also make a difference in someone else's life. When you know how to lead yourself, you can transfer that knowledge. You can transfer those skills so you can lead well in any circumstance. Now, today we're going to talk about how to do just that. Specifically, I'm going to talk about creative leadership. Because if you can tap into your own well of creativity, if you can do that, then you will be equipped to lead yourself and others in any situation that comes up in your life. Now remember, how you live is how you lead, right? It's how you do everything. So what you're going to hear about today, you can also apply it in your daily life as well. What I'm going to share with you today is a wonderful, wonderful example of what legacy living, make your life count, is all about. Okay, here we go. Creative leadership. Now we are in the process of creating a new story, a new narrative. And that new story is all about creative leadership. This new story is compelling because now more than ever, we need all of us to recognize and tap into our creativity to lead well as co-creators in whatever our sphere of influence happens to be in our relationships, in our families, in our work teams and organizations, in our communities in our churches and synagogues and mosques, in our civic and political institutions, in our cities and in our nations. So this new story actually puts creativity, the arts and artistry, right back where they belong, along with leadership. 
not on the margins, but at the very heart, at the very core, the center of our spiritual, social, cultural, political, and economic lives. In fact, this story joins creativity, art, and artistry with leadership. Because you know what? That is precisely what it will take to lead well, to lead with authenticity, to lead with courage, to lead with empathy and gratitude, faith, integrity, to lead with humility and hospitality, to lead with love and legacy in the 21st century and beyond. Now, I know I've shared this lovely story before, but I want to share it again. In the United States, there is an absolutely stunning region of our country in the Appalachian Mountains. In a part of that region, we call the Appalachia Hill Country. Now, the folks who live there, especially the elders, these people have a very special, lovely way that they greet you. When you come to their door, they will greet you not by saying, hello, hi, how are you? Instead, they'll greet you by saying something like, what's working ya? <laughs> right? I'm going to repeat that. What's working ya? That's right. So today, I want to share with you that in my journey as a leader, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, in my journey as a mom, wife, community steward, what's been working me is at the very intersection of creativity, artistry, leadership, spirituality, human dignity, and freedom for all. These are the key things that have been working me. Now, they've been working me for many decades, so this really feels like home to me. I want to share with you a way to consider creativity and leadership. Now, for me, this is my way of being, right? My way of living and moving through the world, a way that has helped me in all spheres of my life as a creative, as an artist, and as a leader. And now you probably know what I'm going to say next, right? I don't actually even make a separation amongst those three arenas of my life, creativity, artistry, and leadership. For me, they all go together, and I hope they will for you as well. It's something that I've written about, this dynamic creativity and artistry and leadership. I've written about it in all of my books, in Pass It On, in Flawless Leadership, Connecting Who You Are with What You Know and Do, in Sanctuary, in Dare to Wear Your Soul on the Outside, Live Your Legacy Now, and in a book called Legacy Living. Go figure, right? <laughs> Legacy Living, The Six Covenants for Professional Excellence. Now, I've been writing these books for well over 20 years, and it's no surprise that there's this intimate connection in all of these books. I write about the art of creative leadership. And specifically, I write about the art of staying the course, the choice of being faithful to whatever is working you. Okay? Now, for the past several decades in my work life as a leader, as a consultant, as an executive coach, a life coach, creativity coach, as a professor, and as an entrepreneur, as well as in my writing life, my singing life, my making dance and music life, my parenting life. What's been working me is this invisible matrix, or what I call an armature, that rules our lives as human beings. I mean, it absolutely rules our lives. Now, I'm going to share a little bit about this resource with you, about this armature, 
Because when you understand how powerful it is, you will actually want to know more about it (laughs) so that you can harness that power and use it to make your life and work better and to help others do the same. So let's make one thing perfectly clear. All right? We are all creative. That's right. Now, if you're saying, oh, no, not me, everybody but me, no. (laughs) If you still have breath in your body, if you still have a pulse, you are creative. Now, let's talk about making that invisible armature visible. That's what I want to delve into with you today. I want to shine the light here so that you can easily recognize or more readily recognize and amplify the power of this matrix, this armature, in your own life and in your leadership. There are seven dimensions or seven aspects to this armature, and they all work together in harmony to give you a superpower in your life. I'm going to have time to really talk about just one of them today, but I'm going to name all of them. Some aspects of these will sound familiar to you, especially if you're a painter, a doctor, a professor, a gardener, a writer, a student, a college administrator, a plumber, (laughs) a firefighter, a police officer, or a community servant. Now that covers a lot of ground, doesn't it? Didn't I tell you before that everybody, all of us, are creative? Okay, so whoever you are and whatever you do, you're going to recognize the parts of this armature. You're going to recognize them as creative principles, creative tenets. And some of these you're going to recognize, but maybe not necessarily within the framework of creativity. Maybe you learned what I'm about to share with you in an entirely different context. And you know what? That's okay. Here's what I've learned and chronicled in my own life. I call the seven dimensions or the seven aspects, I call them seven sacred promises. Why? Because these are promises. These are contracts, right? That we make to ourselves, to one another, and to God. So when I talk about this armature, this structure, I'm referring to the seven sacred promises. Now, the presences, the promises that I want you to know about, that I want you to be more aware of so that you can harness their power, these promises are gratitude, faith, love, vision, integrity, creative action, and legacy. Let me repeat them. The seven sacred promises are gratitude, faith, love, vision, integrity, creative action, and legacy. Now today we have time to focus on one of these promises in a lot of detail. I want to shine the light on vision. But before I talk about it, I want you to know that all of these promises work together. Like I said, they work in harmony. And just like the musicians in a band or orchestra work together, all of the seven sacred promises, they're always present. They are always there as resources that work together for your good, right? To support us as leaders and to support our creativity. And they help us and support us as we keep moving through the days, the weeks, the months, the conversations, the relationships in our lives. They help us to keep on keeping on. And they're ever-present resources that we can draw on in our day-to-day living in our day-to-day, moment-to-moment lives as leaders. So let's take a look at vision. Now, vision is the big idea, 
right? It's the main event. (laughs) It's the idea of what you want to do with yourself, your team, your organization, your community, right? It's not only about what. Vision is also about how. Furthermore, vision is about what and how, and it also includes who. So when you're casting or sharing a vision, some good questions to ask yourself are these. Who will go with me? I love that one. Who will go with me? Another question is who will I encounter along the way? Right? You may not know the names of those people, but you can expect that somebody, okay, or many somebodies, you're going to encounter them along the way. So who will I run into? Who will I encounter along the way? Another question is who will I collaborate with or who will I partner with? There's a wonderful African wisdom saying that goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And let me tell you, anything worth doing Any vision worth pursuing is worth pursuing. It's worth doing together. Now, here's a really cool thing about vision. You do not have to see the entire canvas, the entire vision all at once. In fact, if you do see the whole thing and it's crystal clear, get a new vision. (laughs) That's right. Get a new vision. Because if you can see it and it's crystal clear, what you probably have is a goal and not a vision. Here's what I know. Your vision will change. It'll morph. It'll evolve as you move into it and as you move towards it. So naturally, it will keep morphing and shape-shifting and changing up along the way. So be open. Be open to what is revealed to you. Now, don't get stuck on the vision that you happen to begin with. Why? Because that vision, the one you start with, that vision may no longer be relevant tomorrow or next week or next month or even next year. And this is true whether you are leading through a time of crisis or adversity or not. So remember, you can have your vision, (laughs) but you must always keep your knees bent as you breathe and live into and manifest your vision. Another thing to remember is this. Don't get attached to the particular way that your vision will manifest. In other words, be open, be open to outcome. And like I said, keep your knees bent. Now, one of the many lessons I've learned from being a coach is that you have to be a a guide, right? A guide on the side, not a sage on the stage. You listen more than you talk, right? And you have to see the people that you coach as highly capable human beings, as highly resourceful individuals who can access their own knowledge, their own resources, as their awareness increases. You also have to see the folks that you coach as highly capable, I'm going to say mediums or bridge builders, who can take their newfound awareness and build on it as they confront themselves and others in the real world, in real time, in real relationships, right, in their families and in their organizations. Now, I often apply these lessons when I work with my consulting clients as well. Even though many of them say they want me because I'm an expert in this or that, what they really want, what they really value, is when I help them discover their own solutions. When I help them unpack their own knowledge And when I help them tap into their own expertise, their own resourcefulness, their own genius and creativity. It all boils down to helping them find their own path to their own vision of what's possible. 
Now, I want to share a little bit more about vision. Vision has all kinds of facets, all kinds of dimensions to it that we need to pay attention to. From a cultural perspective, we tend to talk about vision as if we can literally see something, see something with our anatomical eyes. But in reality, what you usually see is pretty blurry. It's kind of foggy, actually. Okay, And if you don't see it that way, you should be. You should be seeing fog. (laughs) <laughs> because as I mentioned earlier, if what you see is really crystal clear to you, it's not a vision. It's not a dream. It's a goal. And there's nothing wrong with having goals, but just be clear that it's a goal and not a vision, right? Vision consists of perception, of insight, and foresight, and hindsight, and reflection, and revelation, and so much more, including respect, which means to look again, to see again, right? To see with new eyes, to see with a fresh perspective. And so I invite you to think about the various aspects of vision. Now, I go into great detail in Dare to Wear Your Soul on the Outside, into vision and to all the other aspects, the seven promises that I mentioned earlier. So as you think about not only what's working you (laughs) with regard to vision, I also want you to pay attention to what's working the people around you, nearby or far away, because the world really is at our fingertips, right? I mean, the world is just a click away. So pay attention to what's showing up for other people. Now, why might this be important, you might ask? Because these people are your potential collaborators, your potential amplifiers. They're people who can potentially be of service with you or to you. Or, you know, maybe these are the people who can gather around you and partner with you right now. Who knows? So pay attention and know that if you have this creative fire that's working you, know that we are made not to walk alone. We were made, we were designed to walk together. We are social beings We're made to be in relationship. So pay attention to those people who you can link elbows with and maybe even partner with along your journey to your vision. Now, another way of saying what I just said is don't try to take the vision, (laughs) your vision, and do it all by yourself, right? That's a recipe for disaster, a recipe for heartache. Been there, done that. And so, as you begin to move in the direction of your dream, the direction of your vision, I invite you to ask yourself, who do I need to know? (laughs) Who do I need to bring along with me? Who do I need to collaborate with or partner with? You know what? Another facet of vision also includes the dreams that we have at night. These are night dreams. Now, in the workplace, we don't often talk about these things, right? This kind of vision. But this is huge. It's very important. Why? Because envisioning, there is a huge element, a very big element of receptivity. That's right of being on the receiving side, not the casting side, but the receiving side of vision. Now, in Northern Hemisphere Western culture, now I'm generalizing here, so please forgive me, (laughs) we typically think about vision as something that flows outward, right? That vision is something that pushes out and is external to who you are. We talk about vision as something that is very penetrating, having a very masculine energetic. 
But another core quality that we sometimes miss is that vision can also flow from the outside in. It can also flow inwardly. Vision is also about receiving. So if you're receiving vision, you are a receptor, right? You are a receptor and your work is to gather and collect. You're not an outputter at this point. You are a receptor, a receiver, which is a more feminine energetic. It's an energetic that's probably more in tune with people who are very sensate, okay, relying on their five senses, so to speak, very sensate in terms of how they perceive and move through the world, how they understand the world, how they make sense of the world. This receiving energetic helps us tap into another aspect of vision, which is revelation. Revelation. Now, here's the good news. The archetype of the 21st century leader is guess what? (laughs) It is the archetype of the creative, the archetype of the visionary. Other names for this archetype is the archetype of artistry or the artist, right? The archetype of the magi, the magician. Now, this archetype, by whatever name we call it, has been around since human beings have been around. And in times of great upheaval, great change or transition or transformation, humanity can actually tap into this pattern or archetype to shift the way we do the things we do, to shift how we show up as human beings. In fact, we can choose to show up as human beings, beings, rather than as doing humans. Let me say that again. We can choose to show up as human beings, rather than as doing humans. I love that. So again, this pattern in human behavior, the pattern of the visionary or the artist, the creative, is now available to all of us. It is available to all of us as leaders, as human beings who are now more open, more receptive, and more conscious of this amazing pattern in the collective, this amazing archetype. What's working me today is creative leadership, specifically leading with authenticity and artistry in our extraordinary times. These are surely what we call VUCA V-U-C-A, VUCA times. Now, for those of you who might be new to that term, VUCA, what it stands for are times of volatility, that's what the V stands for, uncertainty, U, chaos, C, and A for ambiguity. Volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity. Times where we experience wave after wave after wave of disruptive change. Wave after wave of what we know and what we believe to be true. Now, in times of VUCA, (laughs) the old, okay, what we are sure about, right, just begins to fall away. Just begins to disintegrate. In this kind of world, what we know for sure is not the same old, same old. What we know for sure is that volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity will continue to be the norm. What we don't know is what form or shape that norm will take, right? What form that disruptive change will take. This is not new. It may sound like it's new, it may be new for you, but it's not new in the grand 
scheme of the universe. In fact, it's happened numerous times. It's occurred hundreds, thousands of times in the history of humankind and countless times throughout the history of the world. What the world needs now to respond to this VUCA world we live in are visionaries. What the world needs now is artists. Now more than ever, our world needs artistry, needs our imagination, our creativity, not on the margins, but in the center of our individual and community and corporate and public and institutional lives. Artists are what we call the informants. They are the storytellers. Why? Because they get the news first, right? <laughs> and art is an informant. Art is a messenger. Art is a storyteller, too. Art is also an armature. And if we're really conscious and intentional, art and artists can become agents of change, agents of transformation, of innovation, redemption, and renewal. And again, I'm not talking about artists the way we typically think about artists, you know, as people who make a living as professional artists. I mean, I am talking about them, but I'm also talking about you. Okay, we get the news too. And we're storytellers. What do you think we're doing when we're having conversations with one another, when we're expressing our opinions, when we're sending out texts or blurbs on social media, right? That's storytelling. Now, like I said, we're all artists. So I'm talking about the folks that we see in our homes, when we go out of our homes and show up for our doctor's appointments. I'm talking about the folks we see when we're at the grocery store, <laughs> the folks who work at the food bank, in our schools, These are the folks who work on the front lines. These are the folks who work behind the scenes to make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to work. The folks who deliver our, our blood, right? Come rain or snow or sleet or hail. These are the folks who find a way when times are normal and when times are hard, when times are unpredictable, when we're in another wave of VUCA right? Volatility, uncertainty, chaos, and ambiguity. These are the folks who find a way to keep on keeping on, the ones who hang in there, the ones who follow the energy of yes, the ones who change impossible, impossible, impossible to I'm possible, whose first name is can and whose last name is Do, <laughs> right? This is me and you. So as you go about your day today, or as you prepare for the rest of your week, I want you to ask yourself one question, just one, one question. And the question is, what's working ya? Because what's working you is exactly what needs to come into fruition now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. What's working you is your vision. A vision that is all yours, that can only come through you. You know what? If the vision came to you, it will come through you. <laughs> Remember, how you live is how you lead. And if you can lead with creativity, with imagination, with innovation, with a sense of possibility and knees bent and keep those at the forefront, you will be equipped to lead in any circumstance. All right? Okay. If you learned something in this podcast, be sure to tell somebody. 
Share the wealth. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with friends, your family, co-workers, so they can be lifted up and inspired and equipped just like you. You know what? One of the biggest gifts you can give to someone else is to use your gifts, your talents, your signature presence that exists nowhere else on the planet. Ask yourself, how will I use my artistry to reimagine my team, my family, my classroom, my Sunday school, my dental practice, my community, my chamber of commerce, right? My firehouse? How can I provide a lifeline to someone I may never know? And remember, what is working you? That is your invitation to step into your vision so that you can make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. As we continue to celebrate the majestic music of your life, I also want to celebrate you for making your life count. Be sure to join me next time. Now, if you missed last week's episode or any part of this week's, you can listen to the recording at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. Check it out at iTunes, Audible, Alexa, SoundCloud, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. Or you can tune in right here at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. That's talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. You can also find me and learn more about my work and legacy living make your life count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website. And as I've mentioned on other episodes, you can subscribe to my inspirations right on my website. Just go to the main page at GloriaBurgess.com and scroll down a bit. Look on the right sidebar until you see the place to add your email to subscribe to my weekly inspirations. Now, the weekly inspirations are just one little quote (laughs) and a wonderful image that comes into your mailbox once a week, every Monday morning, and it's that simple. Just go to my website. Again, it's GloriaBurgess.com and sign up. You can also connect with me by visiting me on LinkedIn or on Facebook, and that's Facebook.com forward slash DR for Dr. DR Gloria Burgess, Ph.D. You can also find me on the TEDx site and listen to one of my TED Talks. Just type in my name to find me there. Before I close today, I want to thank each of you for tuning in to today's episode, for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about. Not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, Please join me again next time right here for another episode of Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Have a fantastic day and remember, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria. 
Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day. And be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count.